you want to be doing is using your capital to, to generate more income over a period of time. So mm -hmm. instead of our consuming all of our capital resources, our timber and other minerals and uh, substances that we generally use for building our homes and depleting them, we're looking instead at uh, a recycling, a regeneration kind of approach. And whether it be in straw bale construction or rammed earth or any number of other possibilities, the concept of regeneration is the one that we feel is most important. The home's energy source should last considerably longer than that, considering it's the sun. A tower supports a rack of solar plates used to generate about one kilowatt hour of electricity a day, just enough to run a few lights. For heat in the winter, the Schecters use only one cord of wood, thanks to the use of energy gathered in the built-in greenhouse. The sun comes into the greenhouse, is trapped in there, and will naturally want to go out through the highest exits. It does so through windows that come in through the upper story, and as the heat is given off to the surrounding surfaces, it becomes heavier and comes down through lower windows back into the greenhouse again. And what of the hot summers? Well, the lower part of the house is built down into a hillside, so the surrounding earth naturally keeps things cool. As you can imagine, all this translates into a huge savings. Steve Kemble wanted a workshop so he could build drugs. His partner, Carol Escott, wanted a workshop for her herb business. They both wanted a guest house next to their home near Bisbee. So they built it. Nothing unusual about that, except they built it themselves. And they built it out of bales made of straw. The straw used for construction is the same straw you'd see in a field. The straw that we're using is the dead, dry stems of things like wheat or oats or barley or rice uh, that are cut and baled after the seed heads have been cut and harvested for the grain. So it's basically a waste product. And the construction technique is relatively simple. We start off by putting in a good foundation. That was then waterproofed on top so no moisture could wick up through and affect the bales. And then the bales are just stacked on that foundation as if they were great big insulating bricks of some kind. And each bale ends up being pinned to the two bales below it. And once you've got the walls up to the full height, uh, you can then put a wooden plate on the top. Uh, you attach the, the roof rafters to that wooden plate just as if it was a plate sitting on top of a masonry wall. Once the, uh, once the roof is on, then you want to put some kind of surface on the bales to protect them. This little patch here shows how the, the bale walls end up getting stuccoed. Um, we attach chicken wire or stucco netting to the wall and then the stucco is just hand applied right onto the bales. That just shows how the first coat would be going on. A second coat goes on and then usually a, a third very thin coat goes on to create the, the final surface and you're looking at a, a finished surface here. Meerman says running electrical and plumbing in a straw bale house is also a straightforward proposition. Here's a, here's a good example of how the electrical uh, was done here with, in Steve's building. He has some extra posts that have been added here, and so he could attach the boxes right to the side of the post. Uh, in other cases, uh, for example, right over here, there's no post here, but he could attach the box to a wooden stake that was then just driven into the bales. So you really can put the electrical boxes anywhere that, uh, that they're needed.
Let's move through this one-room schoolhouse designed for ecological education. Its warm colored stucco over straw bale walls and a covered entry flanked by benches provides a casual space with a pedestrian-friendly outreach. We first pass through the foyer on our way into the classroom. A mural painted by students gives a personal touch on the way in. The class space exemplifies ecological principles with beauty and ease. Its large volume and ample natural lighting through deep-set light wells provides a sense of freedom with energy conservation. Natural light and air is supplemented occasionally by fluorescent lights and the mechanical system. Deep-set windows through the thick straw bale walls give the feeling of a warm home, a place to enjoy and learn. We are passing through the entryway leading to the great room, the heart of the house. Looking south, the deep-set windows are sculpted by the organic, feminine quality of the straw bale walls. The box beam above is carried around the great room and over the fireplace for design continuity. Interior and upper framed walls are sculpted with geometric shapes that echo the distant hills and provide a masculine balance. The ceiling plane carries over the fireplace into the master bedroom for distribution of light and air. The dining area of the great room leads into the country kitchen, lit by skylights facing north. The warm colors of the wood cabinet work are richly offset by the plastered straw bale walls with a concrete windowsill at the sink. This is so you can see if these walls are actually made of straw bale. I almost didn't put it in there, not very glad I did. The house that we are constructing now for habitat is shown in plan right here, which uh, indicates that it's a very simple configuration mm -hmm. um, and it has 1160 square feet in total, three bedrooms. Uh, they're not the tiny cubicles that you might normally uh, associate with a very inexpensive home. And you were saying this is really good for the dry Central Oregon climate. Yes, it is indeed. We have extremes of temperature here, which lends them lends itself quite well to a high insulation value in the walls and if you use it in the roof and so on. And uh, because it's relatively dry here, we don't have molding problems that That's you would have in the ask. southeast. Now, Rich, why a straw bale house? Well, you know, um, Habitat for Humanity is always looking at um, alternative building methods. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we see ourselves as part of the community, which we are, um, and we see a, a stewardship of the resources um, and affordable housing. So uh, we're always looking at ways that we can pass on uh, utility savings to our families right. over 20 year no interest mortgage. So this is an opportunity to build um, a, a very sound uh, structure and because of the insulation values and of course the ecology issues mm -hmm. um, we're able to give back a uh, savings perhaps of uh, ten to twelve thousand dollars over the length of the mortgage to our family so it's saving wow. uh, of course too we're, we're uh, doing uh, our part uh, and we're always looking to do more for the for the ecology of the community <laughs>